Today, I want to talk about how Ken Griffin will soon be arrested, as a US judge has just ordered the arrest of a US hedge fund manager. I also want to talk about how a market maker is currently collapsing and is about to be removed as a market maker for failing to meet margin requirements. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Investor Turf has tweeted saying a US judge has just ordered the arrest of a hedge fund manager in a $533 million scandal. So it says a US bankruptcy judge has issued an arrest warrant for a hedge fund manager, William Cameron Morton, over allegations of concealing $533 million from the lenders of an Indian education technology startup. The proceedings have also been taking place in the US in Delaware. Basically, this hedge fund manager has been not cooperating with the courts and as a result is currently receiving a daily fine of $10,000 per day and has just had an arrest warrant issued. This is a result of his hedge fund, Camshaft Capital, effectively stealing $533 million. Basically, a bank or a lender lent some money to a company, that company was Baiju, and that company invested the money in Camshaft Capital, $533 million. Now, basically, the guy that owns Camshaft Capital isn't cooperating with the courts, isn't giving back the money, has effectively stolen the money, and that's why he faces this arrest warrant. Now we know Ken Griffin has committed many more serious crimes than what's being alleged here or allegedly has committed those crimes and therefore should also be facing an arrest warrant and massive daily fines as well. When ultimately the music stops for Ken Griffin, for Citadel and for these short hedge funds, I imagine arrest warrants will start flying out left, right and centre. Remember, even though the SEC never investigated Bernie Madoff until the music stopped for him and his sons came forward, when they did eventually come forward, when that music did eventually stop, Bernie Madoff was arrested instantaneously. When that same music stops for Ken Griffin, the same thing will result as well. Now, Kristen has also tweeted about a market maker once amongst the largest clearing houses in the US that's currently collapsing. So Alpine Securities Corporation failed to meet its burden for pausing impending NSCC disciplinary proceedings. So Alpine, once amongst the largest clearing houses in the US, asked for an injunction as a way to avoid closing its doors, should the NSCC stop providing services to it for lacking sufficient capital under new rules. Basically, Alpine has failed margin requirements because it lacks sufficient capital under the new rules. And the NSCC is about to stop providing services to it, aka they're going to stop Alpine from being a clearinghouse and a market maker. They're effectively going to remove them from the securities market and ban them from operating. And that operating ban will surely lead Alpine to be forced into closing its doors. Alpine tried to apply for an emergency halt to allow it to potentially meet margin requirements in the future, but that application for this halt was denied. It seems this is potentially the first market maker that's about to collapse and about to fall, and I imagine many more market makers will be following suit over the next few months. I also wanted to go through some of the trades we've had recently in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. We had a fast moving momentum news play on STI where Jack made $510 in one singular trade. We also had an options play on Pepsi where Doc Holliday made 183% and the bloated investor made $905 again in one singular day. On top of that, Stubby Jeans also took an options play on Google, making nearly $900, paying for his entire lifetime membership in one singular trade. So guys, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group using the link in the description below, where you can pay for your entire lifetime membership in just one trade. Now, Kristen has also tweeted about the hedge fund that just lost a billion dollars betting against MicroStrategy. Andrew Kang, the founder of Mechanism Capital, revealed on X the intricate details of this debacle, saying apparently a fund blew out a billion dollars on the MicroStrategy Bitcoin spread trade today. 
So the reason behind it is because this hedge fund recently went long Bitcoin and shorted MicroStrategy, saying the idea behind it was that MicroStrategy would fall due to the success of the recently passed Bitcoin ETF while Bitcoin rises. Obviously, the actual market response saw MicroStrategy outperform significantly, running from $400 per share to over $1,800 per share. I touched on this recently in one of my previous videos, and that hedge fund has now suffered that billion dollar loss and closed out of their trade. That's effectively what caused the massive jump over the last week or two in MicroStrategy, and again, it's just another one of these hedge funds taking a ridiculously over-leveraged trade and biting the dust. And again, we've seen more and more fishy things happening this week. As you may remember yesterday on Monday in the pre-market, the NASDAQ actually crashed. And by that, I mean ceased to operate. You may have seen this article saying the NASDAQ stock market said it's investigating issues with connectivity without providing details on whether trading was impacted. Now, actually, the entire pre-market was frozen for about three or four hours while the NASDAQ went down. The NISC also went down as well, and no trades were processed on either of these exchanges for multiple hours. While that was obviously resolved yesterday on Monday before the market opened, again, this is just another one of those data glitches that's now resulting in entire stock markets stopping or ceasing to operate. They could potentially try and pull this trick during the AMT squeeze, effectively closing down the NASDAQ and the NYSC for a few hours, for a day, or for a few days to try and slow down the squeeze. But the thing is, when the squeeze has started, when the price starts running, and when these hedge funds start being liquidated, there's no stopping or no halting a freight train. Basically, what I'm saying is that when the squeeze starts, no matter what they do, whether they try and turn off the entire NASDAQ and NYC New York Stock Exchange for days, they will not be able to stop the squeeze. Kristen has also tweeted about the owner that's just defaulted on a $350 million loan. It says a pre-foreclosure action has been filed against Shorenstein Properties' Garment District Office building at 1407 Broadway after the firm defaulted on a $350 million loan. Now this is important because it basically means the bank that's lent this money to this property investment firm is going to struggle to recover much, if any, of that cash they lent out. AK, a potential $350 million loss that's about to hit one of these regional or major banks. Again, just stoking the banking crisis. And Bigham's tweeted about another $345 million CMBS loan backed by eight hotels that was also or has also defaulted. Saying this puts us at over a billion dollars in a week that's defaulted, saying it's starting. So again, upwards of a billion dollars in losses, these banks are going to have to recognise. And that's just in this week alone. I wonder how much we're going to see in defaults over next week, the week after, next month, and the month after that. As more and more of these property investment firms default on loans, as these banks take on more and more losses, we are going to see more bank collapses and more bank runs. And as the market continues delving deeper and deeper and deeper into chaos, we're going to see the market crashing and we're going to see stocks squeezing. And finally, Frank's Place has tweeted about how AMC will soon be paying off or restructuring its 2026 debt, saying AMC is planning to manage its debt that's due in 2026 by possibly getting new terms that could have better interest rates than the current 10% because AMC's bonds have always been well oversubscribed, AMC could easily restructure these 2026 debt maturities, pushing that date out further with a lower interest rate. So for those shills in the comments, for those shills on Twitter, and for those shills on Reddit or anywhere else that's telling you AMC will go bankrupt because they can't pay down their 2026 debt, just remember it's likely going to be renegotiated or reorganized, pushing that date out further and with a lower interest rate making it easier for AMC to repay and reducing AMC's expenditure, increasing their profits. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell.
because that way you'll be alerted when I put a new video. Cheers.